Chapter 30 For him Do you think we have a chance? Pia asks We are sitting in our college stadium, where the Final football match is about to commence Since our college is hosting the match, both Pia And I have been forced to volunteer We're in the refreshment department So obviously, we Are ditching our duty and sitting on the stands instead Waiting eagerly for the teams to come out of the pavilion. I think we do, I reply, almost involuntarily. You do, she asks, looking a little surprised. She seems to have given up all hopes and I decide not to tell her about Karthik playing for our team. I'll let her see for herself. A surprise like that might cheer her up. Uh, I mean the match hasn't even started yet. Anything can happen. Our team is a strong. One, two. So, let's not be pessimistic, right? All the strength of our team is mostly because of him. Without him now, relax. We can't think like that, I said and look away. I contemplate telling her, before. I can decide, I see the opposing team making its way to the field. See they are coming. AITR is a good team, I've heard. The champions of the last two years, he whispers. I know. But our team is still, stronger, I say. Pia turns her gaze away from the field too. Look at me. The expression on her face tells me that she thinks that I have lost my mind. I just, shrug in motion towards the field, where our team is coming out of the pavilion. Fifteen. Players, all dressed in a deep shade of red, teamed with yellow, make their way to the field. It is a very cloudy day, and rain seems just around the corner. Against this background of dark, evil-looking clouds, the team looks very tough. We watch them, slightly in awe. The entire atmosphere is thick with excitement and nervousness, everyone seems to be whispering prayers in their heads. I spot Karthik immediately. Even with 15 guys dressed alike, he stands out. Just his stance is enough for me to recognize him anywhere. He walks with the team, and they huddle in the corner. The captain, then dark, motions to everyone to come close and throng. What I can see, it seems like he starts his pep talk. Every player listens to him intently. Hardly, on the other hand, stands through the crowd, as crowds move together in tension, his jaws tightly clamped together. This condition moves me. His reaction to the news about Tanmay's death, its reason and Akshat's attempt to harm him is understandable. Anyone would be furious, especially if they have a friend's death on their conscience, because of something they did not even do. But I had expected him to cool down a little by now. But by the look of things, he is still in the same condition as he was yesterday. The only relief I can draw is from the fact that he agreed to play in the final match. Surprisingly, even Mandar did not oppose his sudden re-entry in the team. I assume the victory does mean a lot more to him than his hatred for Karthik. At least he is sane enough to realize that their stupid ego clashes and baseless rivalry is not worth losing the cup, after getting so close to claiming it. Is it? Is that Karthik? Pia whispers. Yes, it is, I smile. But, how? Huh? Long story. Let's just concentrate on enjoying the match now. We're so winning this, she says, excitement showing on her face. She suddenly seems alive. We're finally a little close to getting Tanmay something he would have really wanted. No wonder she is so happy. With Karthik on our side, the match is definitely ours. I don't know how you did this. But I just love you so much. She shrieks and hugs me. Ah, I hug her back. Ten minutes later, after the brief initiation ceremony and a few announcements, the match starts. We knew that AITR was a good team, and we had heard that they had remained unbeaten for the entire series, but it turns out that we had still underestimated their power. We have had a simple logic we have Karthik on our team, we will win. But it does not really work like that. Each and every player on Team AITR seems threatening. But our team isn't too far behind either. 
The match is tough, it is between equals. A nail biting 30 minutes later, AITR's team hits their first goal. The match is suddenly lopsided. One would think that being on the winning side, the team would loosen up, but that never happens. They play as furiously as before. Maybe even more, since Ice Panics and attacks with greater fervor. The only good thing I can find in the situation is that our team has not gotten defensive yet. We are still attacking, we don't have another option. But it does not seem to be working. Karsa, for the most part, seems infected. He runs and jogs with him. No real urgency. It makes me think he is not mentally ready for the match. By the time it is half time, the ITR is leading by 1 0. At the whistle, the players make their way to the sidelines. We rush towards our team. What's happening? I ask Karthik when I reach him, but another, louder voice overpowers my question. You. Mandar shouts, pointing at Karthik, who turns to look at him. What the hell do? You think you are trying to do? You need to relax, Mandar. It's all under control, Karthik says. Under control. We are losing the match, can't you see? All because of you. Just listen to. You said you will take care of the match. We had it all planned. You demanded we. Replace our center forward with you. Samar would have at least scored one goal. What do. You think you are doing. Mandar shouts furiously. I told you I have it under control. But you can't blame me for doubting your word, can you? Because the match sure does. Not seem under control. AITR is winning. Stop shouting. They just think that they have the lead. I can score any time I want to. Karthik says cockily. I have to agree, this cockiness has a certain charm to itself. At least I am charmed. Then why don't you? What are you waiting for? For them to tire themselves off. What kind of stupid logic is that? We are getting tired too, you know. Mandar looks very frustrated and probably a little scared too. I am not. Of course not. You are not doing anything. Just standing there. How are you supposed to get tired? Exactly my point. If we score now, they'll know that we are back in the match and they'll tighten their control. Then, you'll have to work harder for goals. We need them relaxed. I'll hit the goals when the time is right and we will win this match. Now, for the last time you need to relax. Karthik says and walks towards where Pia and I are standing. Mandar walks away, muttering something like, I don't even know why I'm trusting this. Bastard. He might even have the match fixed. So, how do you like the match? Karthik asks us. Well, I was worried like five minutes ago. I say. Only Karthik can be insane enough to. Pull a trick like that. You don't need to. It's all. Under control. Yes, we know. You heard, I say and smile at him. It's a nice feeling. I am smiling. Karthik is smiling and even Pia is smiling. It has happened after a long, long time. And it changes way too quickly. What the hell? Karthik mutters to Pia and I follow his line of vision. There, standing in it. The opposite end of the field is action. Karthik starts walking towards him without wasting. I rush after him and Pia follows suit. What's going on? She asks. She is clearly baffled. I just keep running after Karthik. What are you doing with him? Akshat asks me, when we reach him. What are you doing here? I shout at him in response. He clearly does not realize that we know all about what he had done. You son of a bitch. Karthik thunders and charges towards Akshat. Karthik. Stop. I shout out. What the fuck? Akshat shrieks and moves backwards in defense. He looks like a little girl, scared of the dark. Before I can stop him, and before Akshat can make out what is happening, I find Karthik. Holding him up by his collar. Let me go, you bastard, a half-choked Akshat says. Not in this life, 
Karthik says and lands a knee punch on Akshat's nose, loosening his hold on his collar. Akshat loses balance and falls on the ground. Karthik waits for him to get up and then launches himself at him and lands another blow on his jaw this time. Karthik, are you out of your mind? Mandar shouts. Half of Isis football. Team seems to have appeared here out of nowhere. They break up the fight and try to keep Karthik away from Akshat. We are 20 minutes into the second half of the match and the scoreboard has remained stagnant. AITR is still leading, and the worst part is that Karthik is not on the field. And Dar decided it would be a risk to play Karthik immediately. One fight on the field would get him a red card for sure. The referee is taking no nonsense on the field today. For all the time I have known Akshat, I have never realized that he would turn out to be such a coward. He was cunning and soulless enough to plan someone's murder and deceive me like this, but two punches by Karthik and he went running away out of the college campus. I knew his super neat ways probably indicated that he was somewhat effeminate, but I had never imagined him to be such a coward. Even the thought of him fills me with loathing. And to think that once upon a time I thought I might be in love with him, and I let him kiss me, it makes my blood boil. Karthik is not doing much better either. A shot and Akshat must have vented some of his anger, but he still looks very disturbed. He is sitting on one of the benches in the sidelines, staring unblinkingly at nothing in particular. His face is morose and he seems to be in some other world. By now, it has started drizzling a little and by the look of things, I feel that heavy rain is to follow. We have just 20 minutes left in the match, when AITR scores another goal. A crowd exploding with cheers and beats in equal measure. Karthik finally looks away from whatever he was staring blankly at. The noise pulls him back to the world around him. He shoots a glance at the scoreboard and swears loudly. We are trailing by 2-0. shouts something at Mandar. I feel a little relieved. Next moment, we see a player from ice leaving the field and Karthik replacing him. Go Karthik! Pia stands up and shouts. I cheer with her too, silently praying to God. Karthik stretches a bit and then stands still, as if to shake off the memory of his fight with Akshat from his head. The team suddenly comes to life. Karthik shouts instructions to players and they seem suddenly rejuvenated. They communicate with each other through some kind of a secret sign. Language that only the senior players on our team seem to know. The rest of our team looks a little lost, but Karthik does not seem to care. Maybe the four senior players on our team are enough to handle what Karthik has in mind. Even Mandar looks excited. They create a mesh-like formation on the field, baffling the opposing team. After five minutes of vigorous running around the field, they finally get to the goalpost. Mandar signals Karthik, who sends the ball flying towards the goalpost. The ball flies at top speed, until it reaches the goalkeeper, who defends it, sending the ball away. We let out a disappointed sigh. I really thought that Karthik was going to score a goal. It isn't all that simple, I realize. But I am mistaken. It isn't that hard, either. A millisecond later, the ball, redirected by the goalkeeper, lands straight at the feet of our second striker. Without wasting any time, he aims. It hit the goalpost with full force. The ITR's goalkeeper, who is still reeling from the first save, gets up hurriedly, but cannot do anything. It's a goal. The crowd cheers and the chance of Radel, who I guess is the one who hit the goal, booms across the stadium. Even though it would have made me happier had Karthik been the one hitting the goal, it is a goal nonetheless. We are back in the match. Hopes rise exponentially. Barely 10 minutes later, Ice hits another goal. This time, it's Karthik who has done it. The cheering is ear splitting one of the plus points of playing in front of a home crowd. We get up from our seats and jump up and down, shouting at the top of our lungs. Even over. The rain it is pouring heavily now we are able to make ourselves heard. While everyone else is happy just to see our team back in the game, I am happy for other reasons too. They 
Happiness in Karthik's expression is something I would give anything for. Smear goes, blood, his hair dripping water and sweat in the rain, and a happy smile on his face, he looks, almost enchanting. The sheer joy in his expression. I suddenly pause. Where are all these thoughts coming from? Why am I so happy to see? Karthik happy? Am I? Is this, love? Before I get a chance to ponder about it, everyone sits down and Pia pulls me down onto my seat too. Where are you? She shakes me and asks. Right here, I say. You seem lost. Just thinking. Don't worry. He has got it. We're winning. The smile on her face is one of relief and happiness. She has confidence in Karthik. So do I. And sure enough, almost immediately, Karthik has the ball back at his feet. He runs with it for a while, before passing it over to the striker, who then passes it back to him. Everyone has their eyes set on Karthik. We can almost see him hitting a goal in the next second. Karthik. 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 The chants across the stadium are deafening. The crowd gets rowdier. The rain gets heavier. This is the end of the match. One goal and it is done. Karthik. 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 Karthik runs towards the goalpost and Radel passes the ball towards him. I can almost see. Karthik stopping the ball and directing it straight to the goalpost. But it never happens. When the ball comes to him, he lets it pass right through. The ball hits a player from the opponent's side and rolls away from the field. It goes out of the boundary and the referee blows his whistle. It's an outside. No one knows what just happened and why. It was a very easy shot. It's hard to believe. Karthik missed it accidentally. He did it on purpose. It is very evident. But why? I find my answer within seconds. As he makes his way to fetch the ball, Karthik shouts out to me, Nihareka. What? I shout back. I am sitting just three rows away from where the ball is, and I can see him coming towards me. Do you want us to win? He asks. Yes, of course. What kind of question is that? Do you really want us to win? Yes. I shout. Then you'll have to do something for me. What? No. Yes, no. Give me what I want, or else I won't go back to the game. He smirks. He has reached the ball and bends down to pick it up in his hands. What is it? There are just four minutes left in the match. I know. And only you can make me go back to the field and win it. Karthik. What is? I panic. I can see the referee and the other players getting curious. SHH. Let's not waste time. Just tell me you love me. What? I know you do. You know you do. Don't you? He cocks his head to one side and asks. He is way too smug for his own good. But I find even that concerning. Moreover, there is a certain uncertainty in his eyes. No one else could have noticed it, but I have. I have come to know him. And I have come to love him. I do, I whisper. His eyes never leave mine, my eyes don't leave his. The referee blows. His whistle, but we hardly notice. What? I can't hear you. I said I do. Say it, he says. Strangely, the sheer arrogance in his attitude makes me love him more. I love you, Karthik, I say in a clear voice. I can feel the blood rush to my face, and my ears turn warm. The referee blows his whistle again. Mandar and Radel shout out to Karthik, asking him what's going on. I doubt he hears any of them. He seems interested in listening. Only to me. Now kiss me, he says. Now you're pushing your luck. Okay, okay, he laughs, blows a kiss to me and turns back to the field. The referee pulls out a yellow card and waves it at Karthik. Darn. He had crossed the time limit for the outside. But it's just a yellow card, no harm done. Karthik throws the ball to one of the players of our team and runs inside the boundary. I am still really 
coming from the impact that has just happened between us and feeling terrible. Embarrassed. People all around me, who saw it happen, are shooting me strange looks. Making me blush even more. But fretting about how soon the news of my scene with. Karthik would travel to the entire college will have to wait. There are just two minutes left. In the match. So, or not, I just worry about whether or not our team will be able to make it. We do. Karthik hits the most spectacular goal ever. Weaving his way through the mesh of players of the opposing team, he runs determinately towards the goalpost. His clothes are soaking with water and the rain pours down all around us, but that does not deter him. He passes the ball to Radel, who runs with it for three seconds, before passing it back to Karthik. Without wasting any time, Karthik kicks the ball hard, right into the middle of the Goalpost. The goalkeeper manages to touch it, but that does nothing more than change the direction of the ball fractionally. It deviates slightly from its path, but enters the goalpost in the next second. The crowd goes berserk, the noise around me is thunderous. Everything blurs in front of my eyes. People leave the stands and rush to the field, towards the players. Even after about 10 minutes later, I can't spot Karthik anywhere. Seems like the crowd has devoured him. Where is he? I ask Pia, as we stand in our seats, holding hands. I don't know, she whispers. Her voice breaks. I look at her, to find that she is crying. I hug her tightly. We won, Pia. Tell me would have been so happy. I know. If he is seeing this, he must be so. He wanted to bring the cup home. SHH. Don't do this to yourself. We just won. Smile. I prod her and she smiles, a little. Sadly at first and for real after some more prodding. We wait for 10 more minutes, watching the jubilant crowd surrounding the team. Cheering, dancing, and spinning around the field madly. We can't help but feel ecstatic. Ourselves. But. I still can't spot Karthik anywhere. A finger taps my shoulder from behind. Startled, I turn around to see Karthik standing. Behind me, his clothes dripping water, his hair all over the place, one hand behind his back. Hiding something. You scared me. Where were you? I could not find you anywhere. I say. You were searching, he smirks again. Shut up. Don't flatter yourself, I say. I try to be a little aloof and cool, but the pinkness in my cheeks gives me away. I just, you just, I was just looking for you because, Pia wanted to thank you, I say and turn to Pia, what, she looks up at me and asks, oh, yes, Martha, thank you so much for, no, Pia, please don't, your back. I ask, to change the subject. It's nothing, he says. It's his turn to blush now. I have never seen him shy. So it's new. And it's also adorable. Show me. It's just, he murmurs and pulls out a red rosebud from behind his back. It looks, freshly picked and has barely even opened yet. I plucked it just now from the college. Garden, just to, tell you I love you too. Next time, I promise you a dozen. I don't need a dozen. I just need you, I say and take the rosebud from him. On impulse, I hug him. I shiver a little in the cold, as the water seeps into my clothes too. But he holds me firmly and I feel amazing, resting my head against his chest. I look up at him, smiling. As we walk eyes, and I stand on my toes to reach his lips. I kiss him softly.
since that football match the one in which Karthik was amazing and brought the title home for the team we had been practically inseparable until the stupid break happened I can't even begin to tell you how hard these two months at home have been for me away from Karthik I hug Pia as soon as she enters our room and she shrieks on seeing me she throws her bags down in her caretaker her ditty looks at her lovingly as she jumps up happily hugging me to say the least I am relieved to see her all right although we all are fine on the outside I do find myself sinking into depression thinking about Tanmay sometimes I miss him just way too much the pain is almost physical in its intensity it is worse for Pia but she has taken good care of herself she has handled herself very bravely and tried really hard to be happy now when we think of Tanmay we think about all the good times we spent with him all the cherished memories of that cute childish face not the sadness of his death we think about him all the time and we think about him fondly Akshat has never shown his face again ever since he got punched by Karthik during that football match we let him go leaving it to Karthik to take care of him nothing we ever did he picked Tenme back and I did not want Karthik to be for myself to get into those powers and revenge games. So I made Karthik swear that he won't go looking for action. It has worked out fine for us. You can't imagine how much I missed you. I was so eager for college to start again that mom thought I had a boyfriend here. Pia shouts. My mom thought the same. Only, in my case she was right. I laugh and she joins me. You lucky girl. So, where is he? A bike honks outside our hostel and my heart skips a beat. I know that sound, how can I? Not? We look at each other for a second and rush to the window. There, in a black lead, Zeppelin tee and worn out grey jeans, is the best sight in the world, looking up at me and smiling. End of the book someone like you.